Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Richard Fletcher and this channel is all about how to. So everybody always wants to know how to do this, how to do that. So we're kind of taking it a step further and we're actually going to go on a journey together. If you guys are going to stick with me for this year, um, my plan is to each episode I want to answer some questions on how to do things that will help us improve our lives and improve the quality of the life that we live. So this week I want to talk about how to finish what we start. Now, you know, it was going to be another title, but I'm thinking everybody's kind of sick and tired of New Year's resolutions and trying to do that whole thing. So let's do something more practical. Let's talk about how to finish what we start because really and truly that's what it really is all about. You start something and you want to get it into your nature, you want to get it into a habit, and you want to make it a part of your lifestyle. So how do we do that? Well, first things first, if you really are trying to make it a part of your lifestyle, maybe you won't be able to finish. Maybe it's going to just become something brand new for you. However, let's see how we can break these things down and uh, hopefully I can give you some nuggets, some advice. Of course, if I'm becoming, you know, Captain Obvious, feel free to let me know as well. But it's a discussion. So feedback is always welcome. All feedback. And the first thing I want to let you guys know is if you want to do something, especially if it's new to you, the first thing you got to do is get pumped up. You get excited. You get ramped up. You're using that momentum. Now, you know that we find that when we're starting something new, it's exciting, it's fresh, and you want to jump into it and you want to do all the things and you want to be a pro the very first time you do it. Now, we're all guilty of this. You know, we take up a new whatever, a new hobby, and the first time we do it, we want to be excellent. Now, that's not realistic at all. The very first time you're going to do it, you're probably not going to be very good at all. So, use the momentum. Use the momentum to carry you through the first couple of times because that's really what's going to be driving you. It's an emotional thing. So you're, you know, use that, right? It's good. Don't worry about it because we're going to go on to the next step. And the next step is to prepare for the reset. It happens all the time. It happens to everybody. You're going to use that momentum and the adrenaline will wear out. The feeling, the niceness, all of that stuff will wear out. And this is when the willpower is going to kick in. So prepare for the reset. You're going to have to reset your batteries. You're going to have to reset your momentum. You're going to have to even reset your mindset. Because when you get to that edge and you know there's just nothing else left for you to be excited about because you've done it, but you have to keep doing it in order to get good, that's when you're going to have to find something else that's going to excite you about this. Now, let's get to a more practical state. Suppose you want to learn how to swim. Um, you're going to jump into the water for the very first time and you may even feel like you're drowning, but you're going to have to keep doing it. And it's only through repetition is when it's going to become something you can actually do. Now, what happens is, especially as adults, we tend to be um, against change. You know, we tend to be set in our ways. We tend to have experiences and life experiences that even cause a bit of fear when we're starting something new. Don't worry about it. Again, it's natural. Prepare for the reset because really that's going to happen. And when you hit that point and you realize that you're doing that reset is when you can take a stock and see what you've done so far and how you want to move forward. Maybe it's a time for a change. Who knows? But the good news is it gives you a measurement because let's face it, everything in life, we have to measure it, right? That's the best way to know exactly what your progress is looking like. So, after you've prepared for your reset, measure what you've done. How long can you keep it up? Maybe the first time you did the activity or maybe the first time you started learning something new, you burnt out after two months. Okay, now you know that your, two, your, your initial span, your initial activity space is two months. So you're going to now plan for the next two months mentally, right? And once you're getting to the next length of time so let's say it's you're coming to the end of the second two months you're gonna start thinking i can go another week i can go another two weeks two weeks becomes another month so now you've extended your 
expectancy. So you're no longer doing two months because you know you used to do two months and now you're doing three. I don't know. Am I getting through? Am I getting clear? Let's try something different. How's about push-ups? You know, you want to start getting in shape. You want to start exercising a little bit, but you've never done a push-up in your life. Maybe you want to start off with one. Just do one. After you've done the one, get that into your mind that you can do one because that's where it starts. Use the momentum, grab yourself and get to the two. Get to two and keep going from there. But always try to go the extra when you're done. Don't try to do all at once. If you've never done it before, don't think you're going to get up and do 100 push-ups the very first time. The people who you're probably watching are people who have done it a million times. And they know what they're doing. And then they're going to show you and be like, okay, it's easy. Come on, let's go, let's go. They're trying to motivate you. Don't worry. That's great. You need to focus on what you know you can do first, measure it, and then take it a step further each time. That means you're going to need to plan your phase two. Phase one, you're just getting used to it. You're burning out all of that nice happy-go-lucky feeling and now you're going to plan for phase two because phase two is going to be totally different phase two is when you're going to know whether or not you really want this thing whatever it is that you're going after whether it be a new job whether it be a new skill whether it be a new hobby a new sport whatever it is phase two is when you're going to be like okay do i really want this how badly do i want this do i have to get up at four in the morning every morning this is what it's going to take if you want to learn something new, if you want to create a new habit, if you want to finish what you start, then you're going to have to go into phase two. And phase two means that you're going to have to engage something called willpower. Willpower is what's going to take you through phase two because you're not going to have the feeling. You're not going to feel like doing something new because you're still not good at it. Whatever it is that you're doing, especially if it's something new, you're still not good. So phase two be prepared and all of these things that you're doing you're actually doing all of these things before you start your new activity before you start whatever it is you want to finish you have to think about all of these things first let's not try to jump into okay richard said we should do use the momentum so let's use the momentum okay i'm done with the momentum what should i do when you come back and you look at it no 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 go through all of the list first mentally and know that these are happening because part of preparing yourself to complete a job, to complete a mission, is to know your limit and to know as many expectations as you can. The better prepared you are, is the better you're able to handle when these things shift in your life. Because these things will happen. If you're trying to jog every day, it's going to rain one day. One day you're going to get up and you're going to see rain and it's going to be like, should I go? Should I stay? I don't know. Yeah. So that's when you, I, I, no, I'm not, I'm not jogging in the rain. No, I don't need to get that, that fit. I can do that in my house. So anyway, fitness is another topic. Maybe we should do a video on how to get fit because there's some easy ways and there's some hard ways. It just depends on the type of person you are. So let's get back on track. How to finish what we start. We got to finish what we start. It's psychologically, it is accomplishments are fuel. Accomplishments are fuel that help you to keep going. And we want to improve our quality of life. And improving our quality of life means that we're constantly edifying ourselves. We're constantly trying to do something to make us better. Each day, you want to try a little better. You want to try a little more. And I know it's not practical, but let's face it. If we're doing 365 days a year and you fall off 20% of the time, at least you'll get out about 200 days. It's still really good. So where are we? We're using the momentum. We're preparing for the reset. We're figuring out or we're measuring how long we can keep it up. And then we're going to plan for the phase two. Now that we've planned for the phase two, Let's take, let's take a look or let's take a stock at our mistakes. So this is the learning phase. And this might help you to, you know, feel a little better about yourself, right? So whatever it is, whether it's new or whether it's something that you're trying again that you maybe tried before and you want to keep at it and you want to finish, 
learn from your mistakes. See what you've done, record yourself, videotape yourself. Better yet, get a partner. Get somebody who can mentor you, who can instruct you. Why do you think people need personal coaches? Everybody needs somebody who can look at them and you have to be able to take correction from that person. So let's see now. Oh yeah, I'm going to mention that. Don't worry, I'll get to it. So the point is, you have to make sure that you can check out the usual mistakes, right? And the usual mistakes usually come from setting the right time for your activity. People try to go against their own nature. So if you're not a morning person, it's not recommended for you to start something new and start it in the morning. Try and put it into your routine. And this may mean that you need to now take something out and replace it with something else. Let's give you an example. If you wake up and you're directly into work as the minute you get up, or you're directly into everyday activities as soon as you get up and the only time you have is in the evening when you're watching TV, you need to figure out if watching TV is more important than the new thing that you're trying to do. Maybe the new thing you're trying to do is watch more TV. Good for you, kudos. I hope you stick on this channel. But we're gonna talk about how TV is a media, you know, and it influences how we think and how we behave, but that's another topic. Um, Really, if you want to avoid the mistakes, don't don't plan your new activity in a way that you've never been active before. If you are a night person, try to plan your activity into the night. If you're a morning person, try to plan the activity into the morning. If you are more susceptible to change or if you are more willing to do something in the middle of the day, that is the peak of your energy, that is the peak of your highlights. Try and do it in a day. I recommend it. I mean, let's face it. If you're not a morning person, one of the mornings you're going to get up and you're not going to want to do whatever it is, you know? And again, let's talk about getting in shape because that's the number one thing on everybody's list, right? Always trying to get in shape, okay? So it's a brand new month. It's a brand new year. I got to get fit. I'm going to start going to the gym in the mornings. Mm, yeah, but you don't wake up until nine o'clock. It's not practical. Go to the gym in the nights. Okay, I'm going to start going to the gym after work. Mm, yeah, but you wake up at 4 a.m. So let's think about trying to shift something around so that you can do what you need to do in the morning and get your workout. So what I'm saying is you already have a nature, right? And if you're creating something new, you're not going to want to go against your nature in the beginning. I'm not saying that people can't change. I'm not saying you can't adjust, but in the beginning, make it as easy as possible for you to create this new habit. So if it's even on your way to something that you already do, that is how you get into it. Yeah? So let's see now. Any other examples? Let's try going into the next topic. Now, we're just breaking them down little by little, right? And this is a great time for you to have some kind of vision, right? Because if you're just going at this and going at this and you don't know what you're heading toward, then chances are you will never get there. You won't even know. You can't measure it. So usually people say, okay, I want to have this object or I want to be able to buy this. So I'm saving toward it. Maybe what I want is I want to be able to lose this amount of weight. So you're measuring all of that stuff. And we're coming back to measurement again. So you want to remember what is your ultimate goal. Maybe at this point, you need to take a step back. And when you're taking a break, go somewhere or do something that involves seeing the people or seeing peop the, the things that you're looking for. I'll give you an example. If it is that you're saving to buy a car or a house and you've done phase one and you think you're okay, Stop, go and look at houses, go and shop for cars, go and look at prices, go and look online, in the dr test drive a car. If you're saving toward a car, if you're in phase two now and you've realized what you've done and you've, you know, kind of honed in on your savings and you figured out how you're going to get there, go take a drive, go encourage yourself, go and see what it is that your end result is going to look like. Take a picture, paste it up. It's part of a vision board, yes. And as a, again, if I'm sounding like Captain Obvious, I'll go buy a hat and you guys can put it in the comments. But 
Lots of people overlook this. Lots of people get their head down, the visor's on, and they just go. Which is great if that is your personality. If your personality is to get your head down and keep going, no problem. My recommendation to you is the minute you feel like you're getting to that point where you're burnt out, take a stock and go somewhere where the end result of what you want is going to be. Right? If you're trying to get in shape, go somewhere where people are in shape. Maybe the beach. And you're like, you know what? That's why I'm working out. Yeah? Don't go to the ice cream parlor. Yeah, that's counterproductive. Hey, I, I mean, I like ice cream too, but, you know, if you're trying to get to your goal, always remember what the mission is. And sometimes we need a reminder, right? So, don't be alone on this journey, you know? This is one of the main reasons why I'm trying to maintain this channel very from the very get-go. My aim is to create a community. I want to create a community of like-minded people that will not only find encouragement from these videos but encourage me i'm human and i want these things too you know i want to be able to stick and set my goals and stick to it and so yeah i'm looking for encouragement from everybody else as well so jump on i promise you i'm gonna get all of the stuff set up where we can do some side by side and we can do some call-ins and the, the the vision is huge so stick with me um, which leads me to the obvious. Now, if you're not doing this alone, what do you call it? You call it an accountability partner. Huge, huge, huge. Now, the thing about it is that a lot of persons, a lot of us, when we're starting something new, we're kind of ashamed, kind of embarrassed, kind of don't want to tell or show anybody, but we need to get over our own pride and we need to actually have somebody with us who will say, hey man, hey man, it's time to go. Come on, this is what you want. This is what you need and they will encourage you lovingly now i know that different people they respond to different things you need to find what works for you some people like a drill sergeant some people like a brother some people like a mom you do you i can give you recommendations if you want jump in the chat let me talk and we can we can figure it out but my personal for me i like somebody who's doing it with me you know i'm like yo you getting it, I'm going to get it too. If you can do it, I am can do it. So that's the type of person I am. I'm a team player. I am I lean on you, you lean on me. I will call you. You. So we, we do this together, right? So it's a journey that you're taking. Have somebody who will encourage you. Have somebody who will motivate you. Have somebody who you can also motivate so you guys will feed off each other's energy. It's a good thing to have, accountability. Now, that partnership will always be there. You know what I mean? It's a journey. And if you guys are really going to do this together, I mean, yeah, encourage each other right down the way. Now, it makes no real sense for us to try and accomplish everything all at once. And what I would recommend is write it down, you know, and write it down in a way where you can break it into smaller chunks, smaller pieces. So you're going to do this on a daily basis to create a new habit. You're not going to try and think about the whole week or you're not going to do this month to month. I don't recommend a month to month plan. Do a day to day plan and at the end of the week, you assess the days. And if you can, and if it's necessary, you write it down. Even if you're training in the gym, when we just started, we wrote down our programs and we would look at the progress. Maybe we started at 30 pound weights went to 50 pound weights, went to 70, and we tracked the progress. So we always knew what we were doing and it's good. So yeah, remember, in everything we do, we want to stay on course. And it's not easy because we are going to get derailed by life itself and our own mind, but we can shift our minds, right? The mind is very powerful, but we, the willpower of mankind is stronger than the mind, yeah? So if you are willing to take this journey with me, Stick around. We're going to talk about some more stuff next time. But for now, I'm out of time. I ran over my time a little bit. But I thank you all for sharing, for staying with me. Please let me know what else I can do for you guys. Let me know what other topics. I'm going to be getting better at this. And I promise you, it's, it's going to be exciting. All right. So look forward to seeing you again. All right. Thank you. Peace.